Lord, who forgives all our sins. Mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from Genesis chapter 9, verses 8 through 17. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you. As many came out of the ark, I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I've set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I'll remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Psalm 25, to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul, my God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. But none who look to you put to shame, let the treacherous be appointed in their seat. Show me your ways, O Lord and teach me your paths. Speak your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. You have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgression. Remember me according to your love, for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in his way. Christ, the humble in doing right, teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies.
The epistle is from 1 Peter chapter 3. Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight persons, were saved through water. In baptism, this prefigured now saves you, not as a removal of, of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, my Beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beast, and the angels waited upon him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent. Believe in the good news. The gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And please be seated. Good morning. Welcome to Lent. 
I know you love it because it's always so happy and cheerful, and we're not at all talking about sin and deprivation and, you know, giving up stuff, right? <laughs> and yet here we are. Th this morning, I, there, there are these bookends that I want to talk about. I want to start with the, the Genesis reading and this promise of God and Noah and the, the rainbow. This is the story of the rainbow where God promises he's never going to destroy the earth by water and flooding ever again. This is a covenant between God and every living creature. One side. The other side is Jesus being baptized. I feel like we've read that a few times. And then being driven out into the wilderness. So it's kind of this stark difference of being covered by water and now you're in the wilderness. Now, I'm an East Coast girl uh, raised in Virginia. When I think wilderness, I don't think Middle East wilderness. I think woods, forest, that kind of wilderness. Like there's just no civilization. There's no houses and people and plumbing and, you know, those things. But the wilderness that Jesus entered was very different than that. Not a lot of trees, if any. And not desert like, you know, like the movie Dune, where it's just dunes of sand. No, that's not what we're talking about either. We're talking flat. Some hills, but a lot of rock. Caves. Nothing can grow, really. It doesn't really support life, like the shepherds that had sheep and goats at that time had to go to specific places because there really wasn't a lot. There's not grazing. There are no fields. Not in this wilderness. Lack of water. I mean, just it's very different than what you and I would think of when we just hear the word wilderness. And that's the wilderness that Jesus was driven into. And that driven word is important. It's different than how Matthew and Luke describe it. Mark is very different here. Driven, as if he doesn't really have a choice in it. The Greek word is the same word that's used. Remember the story when Jesus drove the demons, like cast out the demons out of a demon-possessed man and put them in pigs? Remember that story? He drove the demons out into the pigs, and the pigs were driven off a cliff. That kind of driven. Like there wasn't a way for him to really say no. And we don't think about Jesus like that because Jesus is God, so God always has a choice, right? God chose to be crucified. God chose this whole thing, his whole ministry. So this is kind of a little dicey for us. But we've got to remember where we are. Jesus has been baptized. Then there's a wilderness, and then disciples. The disciples get called. It's this, this little time in between. So he doesn't have a following yet. He doesn't have the people that are going to support him. He doesn't have people looking for him. He hasn't had a miracle yet. He had this, like, the heavens open, and nobody really knew what that meant. You know, this is my son, the beloved. But nobody knew what any of that was, and then he disappears because he goes out in the wilderness. Like, wh where'd he go? And he chooses it. Now, for us, as we are intentionally entering Lent, we are choosing to enter a wilderness of sorts. We are choosing to acknowledge that this stuff happens. However, when the wilderness really happens for us, it's not a choice that we make. It's something that happens to us. Whether it's a scary medical diagnosis, or the loss of a job or trouble at work, or struggling in a relationship, a, fr a friendship or a family relationship, or worried about someone in, that is a close friend or a family that's going through a hard time, and you get to that point where you're like, you know, God, you could, you know, show up and do something. 
And sometimes that happens, and sometimes we don't see how the hand of God might be working. And it's hard. Mother Teresa, easily the best-known saint, at least in our collective lifetime, someone who gave up literally everything, worked among the poorest of the poor for her whole life, took people that no one else would help, no one else would do anything for, that the world literally just ignored and denied existed, and she went and gave them dignity and support as they were dying in the streets of Calcutta. She wrote letters to her confessor, who was a Catholic priest, that confessor published those letters after her death. It was a big controversy, you might remember it. Because those letters were private. And what you say in the confessional is supposed to remain sealed and private. And yet these were published. Thank God, honestly. Because what they revealed was that for decades, she never felt the presence of God. She called it a long, dark night of the soul. Can you even imagine? Like, if there's anybody on earth that's supposed to have, like, that direct line to Jesus and God, like, it should be her, right? Which makes me feel a lot better. Because if she's not getting it when I'm going through those times, and I know it's really not something wrong with me, it's just the way things are for whatever reason. And this spiritual wilderness that I might be in somehow is going to be made right, somehow is going to be okay, and somehow we're going to get through whatever we're getting through. And this moment, in this time, we have a promise from God that God is always there. Go back to the Noah story. The covenant between God and every living creature. God's always there, always with us, whether or not we feel it, whether or not we can acknowledge it, whether or not we even know what's going on, the hand of God is at work somehow. And our work as people of faith is to trust that that is so which isn't always easy. So as we enter this season of Lent and we're going, kind of thinking about wilderness and the starkness and the nothingness that we sometimes might feel, just as the angels waited on Jesus, so we can find angels in our life too. There are Folks in the United States, I would love to say that I'm one of them, I am not, that love to hike. And there are people that take on the big challenge in the United States of through hiking the Appalachian Trail. Love the idea. I really like hotels a lot. So that's not going to happen <laughs> for me. However, you know, the Appalachian Trail runs from Maine to Georgia, Georgia to Maine, whichever way you want to walk, north or south. And you enter a different kind of wilderness, one with trees and trail markers and other travelers on the road. Among the people who do this, it is very well known that there is something called trail magic that happens. When just when you need it, just when you think you're going to quit, just when you're going to give up, some trail angel comes along and gives you whatever it is that you need to keep going. Maybe it's just companionship for a few miles. Maybe it's somebody to share a campfire with. Maybe it's a ride into town to get a bed and a shower and an actual hot meal made by somebody other than you. Maybe it's a pair of socks because yours are worn out because you've walked in those socks for thousands of miles of But those little things just show up when you're hiking, right when you need it. And I think that's true for us in our wildernesses. When we have those moments where we think, 
I can't do this anymore. I, I don't know what's going on. I'm, I'm done with whatever this stuff is, and I need this stuff to end, and something needs to change. There's something or someone that's going to come along and be that angel, the trail angel for us. Whether it's a neighbor, a family member, a friend, dare I say, another member of this church, where we come together, we support each other, we help each other. Come what may, whatever it is we're getting through, we're going to get through it together. We're going to help each other. We're going to make sure that each one of us feels that presence of God in some way, even if it's just a kindness or a pat on the back or a listening ear. We help one another because God uses each and every one of us help each other through the wilderness that life sometimes is. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scripture. He is seated to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again, glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, he proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Those of the people form one. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishops and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who are in let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For all who have died in the hope of resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. 
for deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. The saints, let us connect, commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We offer prayers for our families, Jay, Jill, Cody, and Hope Hanchi, Rick, Stephanie, Hannah, and Clara Havrilla, Bill and Anita, Anita Hegster, and Douglas Hodges. We pray, offer prayers for our military and their families, Eric, Robbie, Anthony, Anna Marie, Vincent, Brian, Beth, Grant, Patrick, Jonathan, Walter, Justin, Cameron, Adrian, Brad, Cody, Josh, Ben, David, Kevin, Jerry, and Nate. We offer prayers for our college students, Colin, Karen, John, Kelsey, Zach, Virginia, AJ, Ben, Kristen, Seth, Caitlin, and Matthew. Please say with me the prayer for Trinity. Heavenly Father, we thank you for calling us into your service. Our mission is to invite others to be a part of our community, inspiring them to have a deep and abiding relationship with you and to serve all in your name. Help us to respond to that call wholeheartedly and lead us boldly into the future. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. Uh, I just want to start with a thank you. Last week we had a huge week, um, annual meeting. Y'all came, you showed up, you brought food. We had a great meeting, elected new vestry. Um, that's on the back of your bulletin. Sunday night was Super Bowl party. People came, brought food, snacks. Tuesday night, pancake supper. Great pancakes, by the way. They're pro probably the best we've had, which were amazing. So. Thank you to everybody for that. Um, and then Ash Wednesday services on Wednesday. So and it's a special thank you to the men's group for sponsoring and organizing both the Super Bowl party and the Pancake Supper. 
uh, really appreciate everything that you did because um, we had a, a crazy busy week. Yes, Amy. Yes. Yes, thank you for that, Amy. Um, for those on Zoom, Amy just said uh, thanks to everybody who cooked uh, the all the pancake batter and all the leftovers were donated to the Day Resource Center and they were very appreciative to receive the leftovers. Um, so we, we had a lot. So going forward for now, a couple announcements to draw your attention to. We started Lent, so we're talking Easter lilies. If you'd like to sponsor a lily, the forum is in your bulletin. Um, and also, if you are looking for a way to be more involved and you would like to serve Trinity in a new and different way, there's lots of opportunities described here. If you have questions about any of that, just see us. Happy to answer, like, what's the time commitment? What do you have to do? Like, all that kind of stuff. Happy to, to help you figure out, you know, what you can do if you would like to do more. And we'd love to have you. Um, just an update on Deacon Frank. Uh, he came home from the hospital on Friday. Um, He's doing well, the infection is cleared up. Still has a very long road, uh, but he is home. And we'll just keep you updated as we know more information. Um, more questions about that, we can talk greater detail in the hall if you'd like to after church. Um, other things we need to announce this morning? Oh, are there birthdays in the coming week? Yeah, is it yours? Yeah, which day? Today is your birthday? Yay, happy birthday. <laughs> And also, I love the giant heart on your sweater. <laughs> That's awesome. Anthony, you too? Yes? When is your actual birthday? Thursday, okay. Anybody? Yes, Richard? Oliver, okay. Oliver. Anybody else? All right, let's pray, shall we? Holy God, we thank you for Michelle and Anthony and Oliver. We thank you for the many gifts that you have given each of them, how they respond to your call on their lives. We thank you for the love that they share with their friends and family and all of us. We pray your blessing upon them as they celebrate their birthdays and pray this year would be one of health, happiness, and wholeness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. How about anniversaries? Wedding anniversaries? Okay, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
her. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy, and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. O Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you. 